What's up guys, my name is Timbo and we're back yet again talking some Destiny 2. A few days ago I made a video on the Eververse issue in Destiny. If you missed it, I'll link it in the cards right now as well as in the description. And in that, many of you guys brought something to my attention, so much so that I thought it would be worth addressing. Now this video, as you may be able to tell already by the lack of editing, is going to be more of a laid back type of rambling video. Mainly because I wasn't planning on making this. There are other videos still coming, but I thought I would sneak this one in here as sort of a bonus to follow up the video I made on Eververse. So what's this video all about? Today we're going to look at a set of tweets posted by Christopher Barrett, or Barrett. I've heard it pronounced both ways, so I apologize if I'm butchering the name. But basically, he said some things that are giving many members of the Destiny community some hope for the future of the game. And like I said, a lot of you wanted me to talk about this, so here I am talking about it. The best way to do this is to first read the tweets, so let's do that. Happy Holidays Guardians, I hope you are enjoying the dawning or at least a bit of chaos and mayhem. There are a few things I want to mention before the year ends. For the upcoming Iron Banner and Faction Rally events, in addition to brand new seasonal and armor ornaments, we are adding new themed sparrows, ghosts, ships, and shaders for the reward pools. Also, early next year, we're refactoring raid itemization across the game. The most difficult activities should be the most rewarding. And finally, I know we say it a lot, but we hear your feedback on Eververse. We both want our players to feel respected and to deliver great content regularly to our community. Expect lots of discussion with the dev team and an update on our path forward after the new year. One more for good measure, we have short-term and long-term solutions for vault space in the works, since I know that is another hot topic. Well, there is certainly a little bit to talk about in here. Obviously, Destiny 2 is not in the greatest spot right now. There are some people that love the game, some people that are a bit frustrated and disappointed, and others that have gotten to the point of completely despising this game and Bungie. Wherever you are currently, you can't deny this happening. There are tons of YouTube videos, Reddit posts, things on the Bungie forums, all discussing many different issues people are having with the game and Bungie, both long-term and short-term. With that being said, I don't think that a simple thread of tweets, no matter who they're coming from, will really constitute a difference. However, there are some promising things said in here, and if they do end up coming true, I think that everyone can agree this will be a step in the right direction. Firstly, I found his first tweet to be a little amusing on how he addresses the fact that you may not be enjoying the dawning very much aside from Mayhem. Mayhem to me is the only thing with real substance in this event, and it's a game mode we had in Destiny 1 for like, Two years, so yeah, the dawning, bit of a letdown this time. And I think this says a lot because it's not like the dawning was super awesome in the past or anything. Then getting into the addition of new ships and sparrows and stuff for Iron Banner and the Faction Rally is something that was pretty reassuring. I'm not going to get super excited about this sort of thing because having those items to earn in these events is something we should have had all along, but I'll take it. For me, the best part of this whole thread comes next when he talks about the raid. The most difficult activities should be the most rewarding. Thank God, I don't know who thought differently at Bungie, but I'm glad they're gone. This is one of the biggest changes made from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2. Yes, I think that casual players should get high level loot. However, you need to incentivize end game activities. In a game like this, there needs to be things in the game that not all players can do. And solo players and those types of people can complain about that, but as a developer, if you want players to keep playing, you have to give them something to grind for. They've already gotten rid of random rolls on weapons, they've already gotten rid of consumables and materials, they've already gotten rid of overly powerful exotic PvE weapons, they've already gotten rid of customizable builds, they've already gotten rid of upgrading your gear and weapons. You have to give people a reason to keep playing beyond the max level, beyond playing through the content for the first time. I and other people have beaten this into the ground by now, so I don't know how they will incentivize loot like that which comes from the raid in the future, but if it's anything close to how it was in year one or year two of Destiny 1, I think they will be making a lot of people happy. And with their guided game system and the forms that still exist, people really shouldn't act like they have any excuses. Like my boy Syndrome in The Incredible says, if everyone's super, no one will be. Everyone in Destiny 2 is super, and they make it so easy. Make the game more challenging, and it will become more rewarding, and people will keep playing it. Next, he goes into Eververse, and you know, like I've said, I've given my two cents on Eververse. I think everyone has said something about Eververse at this point, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. However, I will say this to follow up my last video. Yes, I know the items are cosmetic, and you can avoid them in that way. Yes, I know microtransactions fund the game. But what people have got to understand is that none of that is the point. Yes, microtransactions pay for more content, but for one thing, Destiny already has a season pass, and more importantly, 
Eververse was put into the game to help the live team make events like the Dawning. Now events like the Dawning are just a big microtransaction. So what's it funding? Itself? Do you understand how silly that sounds? Yes, the items other than the gear sets are cosmetic, but what those people don't realize is that these cosmetic items are the only thing to grind for. Between the Curse of Osiris and the Dawning, the Eververse store has more items in it than what came along in the actual game. Yes, you can get these items by playing the game. You can always get what's in loot boxes by playing the game, but you will never get there. You will never have enough time to earn everything. And if you think I'm wrong in saying that, then you are naive and you are part of the problem. People on Reddit ran the numbers. 81 items dropped from Dawning Engrams. 61 of them are exclusive to the Dawning. 20 are from the Curse of Osiris and Vanilla Destiny. If you wanted to get everything, the lowball number would be $80. The high, $600. And in the actual game, what do we even get? Vendors don't restock their inventory for us to buy with currency anymore. A lot of the items we got are just returning exotics from Destiny 1. Eververse isn't pay to win. However, what people need to realize is that if Destiny 2 had a fulfilling endgame with tons of rewarding loot to earn, gear to level, builds to create, and all of that great stuff we had in the first game, plus more evolution, then no one would be complaining about Eververse. It would be nice if they took away the RNG Vegas aspect of it, but what really needs to happen is for the base game to be more worthwhile. So I don't know what direction Bungie will be taking here in the future, but I sure hope that they act on what the community is saying. And then lastly, he touches on Vault Space, which no matter what Bungie does, they seem to always have a problem with this. I personally don't really care about Vault Space, so I'm not going to waste my time getting into it. So overall, what do I and what should we take this post as? I think people should take it as promising, but don't get overly excited until we hear some actual news and actual plans. What I think Destiny 2's biggest issue is, is an identity crisis. Destiny is like that kid in high school that is hanging out with all these different types of crowds trying to figure out who it wants to be. A lot of people see Bungie taking steps back with Destiny, and yet while sure I can agree to that in some, in a lot of ways, I understand that the issue goes deeper than that. Even if they fix all the stuff that Christopher Baird addresses in his tweet, the game will still not be where it should be four years into its life cycle. Destiny was and is a game built without a foundation. Bungie doesn't know if they want to make their game an RPG or just a shooter or just an MMO or just whatever. They don't know how loot should be given out, the frequency of it, the difficulty of it, who they want to cater to. They don't know if they should focus on fun or balance or try to do both. Should they make their multiplayer competitive or casual focused? How should that impact PvE? How should they interact with one another? So many people see the changes that Bungie makes as backward steps, but in reality, they're not. Bungie just keeps making these lateral moves, not moving anywhere, because they constantly change their minds on what type of game they're trying to make. You guys know that I love Uncharted, and even though there's four of them, technically five or six depending on who you ask, they know how to handle evolution. A criticism Uncharted gets is that it's just shooting and climbing. And yeah, it is. But Naughty Dog was able to take the pillars they set, shooting, climbing, storytelling, and expand on that in later games. They built the foundation in the first iteration so that when Uncharted 2 came along, they were able to take those things and go bigger, go better on everything. The Uncharted games were all relatively the same when you get into their base mechanics, but that isn't a bad thing. Uncharted has an identity. It knows what type of game it wants to be and expands on that. Bungie is four years into making Destiny, and they still have no clue what they want this game to be. They'll never be able to expand on new races and mechanics, space battles, min-maxing, etc, etc, etc. The game will never evolve. That's why people just say Destiny 2 is a DLC. Destiny is a game built on sand, and until they figure out what Destiny is, the game will never get any better. So guys, those are my thoughts and ramblings really on the current state of Destiny and the comments made by Christopher Barrett. It's nice to see, but it doesn't really change things for me for the time being. Even though I only really play Destiny to make videos because I like talking about the game, I still hope that things are able to be turned around both short term and long term for this game. If you enjoyed the video, if you could please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>